Welcome, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining us today in this new webinar from FIAM. It's uh, two past four right now in Italy, so um, I'm gonna wait uh, one minute more so more people can join this uh, webinar. Okay, I guess we can we can start. Almost everybody joined already. So again, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining this new webinar from FIAM. First of all, for any connection issues, please write here down in the chat box. Um, today we are going to uh, introduce briefly the topic of. Uh, ergonomics uh, in the assembly processes. Uh, there will be a question and an answer session at the end of my presentation. Uh, so please, in the meantime, you can write all your questions here, here down again in the chat box. Um, the webinar will be held in English, as you understood already, and it will last for about half an hour, 40 minutes, depending as well by your questions. Uh, the session will be recorded and will be available online in the next days. So you will probably receive a link, an email with a, with a link from our marketing department. Um, so we can start in the meantime. Uh, for those who don't know me yet, I am Mattia Garziera and I am in FIAM since uh, 2016, uh, as I says, uh, our manager for overseas markets. So uh, I'm dealing with the uh, Americas, with African countries, Middle East and Far East countries. So what I do in FIAM, in FIAM, I uh, well together with our international partners, I support companies uh, in, in order to improve their assembly processes and activities using our, our products. And FIAM is a company that uh, design and manufacture industrial tools and automated assembly solutions, as well as air motors. Um, since 1949, so we turned 70, uh, we turned 70 last years. Uh, during this time, uh, we sold almost uh, almost uh, two million tools worldwide, and we have grown up to ninety employees uh, here in our HQ in Italy, where we have a seven thousand five hundred square meter manufacturing facilities. I'm glad to say that we are. Uh, uh, we are export-oriented company because more than 50% of our turnover is coming from global markets. Uh, indeed, we are present in more than 60 countries worldwide, with uh, including two branches in France and Spain. Um, let's say that beside the catalog products we produce. Uh, how strength is having a wide range of custom-made solutions, whether they are uh, manual tools or automated assembly machines. Um, FIAM is selling its product to uh, a variety of global customers uh, that are coming from different sectors, starting from the general industry, uh, then going to the household appliances and uh, electronics, and then MVI and automotive tiers, especially this last one, the automotive tiers, is a sector that 
let's say, became a leading sector in terms of new technologies, innovative materials, quality standards, and also ergonomics. In fact, um, what we, we have seen is that uh, everywhere in all sectors, therefore not only automotive tiers, ergonomics aspects are nowadays uh, more and more important. Uh, they are not seen anymore as a, as a cost for uh, businesses. They are now seen more like an investment in order to uh, improve and increase the efficiency and the productivity of the enterprises. So, um, let me point out one thing. The FIAM actually has always been active in promoting uh, ergonomics issues. And uh, for example, the very first releases in this matter date back from the years 2000, when those topics, let's say, were not really uh, popular within the assembly industries. Here in this slide, you can see uh, we were involved in many committees and working groups for ISO certifications in the past. Plus, we had multiple collaboration with the European and industrial groups for ergonomics research purposes. Um, so, uh, let's start simply by the definition of ergonomics. So, what does it mean, ergonomics? Ergonomics is a multidisciplinary science that is basically, basically analyzing the interaction of three elements. These three elements are the human being, the machines, and the environment. The human being are intended, in this case, just make an example, uh, the workers that are using a specific tool in order to perform a job. The machine uh, can be, for instance, a screwdriver that is helping the worker to complete the job. And the environment is uh, whatever is around in the surroundings of the workers uh, and that might affect the ergonomics of, of the tools or the, the asset around it. So we can think about, for instance, the assembly line or the conveyor line. Um, so what's the point of analyzing these three elements together? The purpose of ergonomics is uh, to improve the system performances and overall worker efficiency, well-being, health, and safety. Uh, as you can understand, this is a uh, quite complex matter uh, since he is touching several uh, disciplines here and there, uh, for instance, biomechanics, industrial design from one side, and physiology and psychology from the other side. It's not that easy, let's say. Uh, so why, the next question is, why should we bother with ergonomics? Well, we have many reasons that are telling us we need, we should care about ergonomics. Uh, for instance, uh, the first one is definitely the health of our operators. Clearly because nobody wants to have sick operators, nor wants to have a, a lack of production due to, due to operators on leave. Secondly, we have, uh, let's say, legal obligation toward our employees and toward our government. Uh, 
that are the state where we base our, our business. Um, we will talk a little more about this point. The third one is uh, order, cleanliness, and standardization. And the fourth point is uh, we should worry about ergonomics in order to increase our efficiency, our, our productivity, and quality. Uh, uh, just a quick note on the point number three. Uh, as you uh, could imagine, when we say order, cleanliness, and standardization, we refer to uh, some well-known methodologies of uh, lean production. Nowadays, everybody knows the term of 5S and Six Sigma. Uh, for instance, uh, let me recall some basic uh, points coming from the 5S, 5S method. Uh, that is actually the S sort. So the goal is to eliminate everything that is not essential for the production. Second is set in order. That means organizing the working areas. The third is um, shine, referring to the methodological and regular cleaning of the workplace. Uh, the fourth S is standardized. So whenever the workplace has been clean and organized. It is a must keeping uh, the same state or the same condition in order to standardize uh, this process. And the last but not least is making is sustained, and it means making the 5S programs a lifestyle, not just a, a, a today case. Um, again, the four point is the summary and the results of the first three points above. Uh, going a little bit more deeper in the test, uh, what are the obligations for the employers and the managers when we talk about ergonomics? So what do they supposed to do? Uh, more or less, all governments around the world have their own regulations, regulations and laws for employers in order to, to keep safe workers and workplaces. In Italy, for instance, we have a, we have a law uh, that is called 8108, where actually this law is saying that employers and managers have to set up a document of the of the risk assessment for those uh, for those situations first, and then much more important, they have to take some actions and therefore uh, development a program uh, uh, of improvements toward this this risk assessment. Um, This, uh, for what concern the skewed drivers, let's say, but in general, all the, the working tools, the risk uh, for operators can be divided in two uh, categories. First one is the risk coming from the product, so related to the product itself and therefore coming from the manufacturer that can lower as much as possible uh, this, uh, this risk again by designing a very ergonomic tool, for instance. Anyway, uh, there will always be, uh, let's say, uh, a residual risk that must be specified and very clear in the user manual of that product. The second one are the risks deriving from the use of the products, and it is not, let's say, under control of the manufacturer of the product itself, 
but can be controlled by the end user, uh, let's say the quality manager, the line supervisor, or the manufacturing manager of the end user that shall analyze um, and control that the tool is being, let's say, used correctly first, and uh, even much more important, according to the environment around the workers. Uh, <clears throat> concerning the product risk, now, uh, not considering for a moment uh, the ergonomics aspects for the choice of a, of a skewed driver. If you have today uh, select a proper skewed driver for your, for your activity, for your application, let's say that you first need to understand whether you need a pneumatic or a electric skewed driver. Secondly, you need to, to, let's say, to decide to understand whether your application requires a, um, a shut-off, let's say, uh, screwdriver or a slip clutch screwdriver or a current control screwdriver or, again, a screwdriver with transducer. So what we call the type of torque control of the screwdriver. Uh, second, in a third case, uh, we need to understand the volume of products uh, we have to produce daily or during a shift in order to understand basically the cycle time for which this, this queue driver will be used. Uh, and also the material to be assembled along with the, with the skews we are going to use. So all these choices will have a huge, let's say, impact on the, on the finer ergonomic of the tool. So going back to our point, so to the ergonomics of the screwdriver, beside the technical aspect we have just seen right now, um, a very ergonomic screwdriver need uh, a very low level of vibrations in the grip. Uh, it has to be silent, so the noise needs to be very low. Uh, clearly, uh, the weight has to be there, uh, the size and the shape has to be, have to be according to the, to the operator, so in many Let's say uh, electronics factories, we see females operators, so we need to consider this aspect as well. So whenever the, the skewed driver is going to be used by a, by a woman, um, we need to, to understand and uh, to get a, a very minimal reaction force on the operator hand, what we call in the field, the kickback. Uh, the regulating and starting systems of this Q driver has to be simple, precise, safe, and need to be to require a minimal effort for the operator. You, you should consider that operators uh, are using this Q driver for at least eight hours every day for at least five days a week. So at the end of the, of the month, they say, it's gonna be a, a, a huge time. So definitely, if we are not going to use, a, let's say, a good ergonomic skew driver, uh, there will be a, you know, uh, a backside uh, on this operator uh, health status. Last but not least, and this is mainly for, for air tools, the possibility to use non-lubricated compressed air. This is more for, for a question of, uh, of, of environment and pollution. And let me add also a point number eight, which is not here in the list. Whenever 
you are using electric screwdriver that are, let's say, uh, more and more popular uh, in our markets. I would, personally, I would consider brushless screwdriver rather than screwdriver with uh, brushed motors. Why? Because uh, the brushed motors uh, release in the air carbon dust that can be very dangerous for the for the workers, for the operators that are around this this tool. Um, so now we may we have made a list of all the main factors in order in order to use the main uh, sorry parameter in order to select a very good and ergonomic screwdriver. But uh, let's try to understand uh, the main risk associated with the, with the use of screwdrivers. Again, we have been discussing before about uh, vibrations, uh, about the noise level, that we need to divide it be between the sound pressure level and the sound power level. I'm gonna take a, a, just a quick note later on about this point. Uh, the fatigue and some, uh, again, environmental factors. Um, about points number one and two, uh, these are uh, normally figures that we can find and read in the um, in specification label, in the, in the tag uh, label of each tool, of each screwdriver. Uh, so normally you will see that vibration uh, level has to be less than 2.5 uh, meter per second square, for instance. And normally uh, talking about the noise level, a good screwdriver uh, has something like uh, a maximum of 70, 70 decibel of noise. Um, it, it might sound trivial, but uh, uh, let's pay attention about these two points because it's not always, uh, uh, let's say, uh, undertaken that uh, the values that a manufacturer is stating on this text are real or has been tested for real. Um, for instance, I can say that FIA, we have uh, our internal semi-anechoic chamber uh, where we test, uh, for instance, the noise level of our tools. And we have uh, this in the same laboratory uh, we have some accelerometer and pressure sound uh, power sensor in order to test again the, no the, the noise level of our tool. So what FIAM is stating in, in the technical uh, tech, in the technical level, is, uh, is for true, is for real. Uh, the point number three, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I told you before, uh, I'm gonna have a quick note about the difference about the sound pressure level and the sound power level. Uh, the sound pressure level is uh, the noise level that uh, the, the human being, being the workers, is, uh, uh, is hearing. So, is considering as well uh, the surroundings condition. So for instance, more noise coming from other machineries. If for instance, we are in a complex context of uh, an assembly line or uh, a conveyor line, while the sound power, which is different, and, the, and that's the one we can we are able to test in our laboratories is uh, is that directly the the source um, of is the energy emitted by the source 
uh, of the of the of the screwdriver itself. So regardless any external factors or uh, external machineries and and so on. Point number three, fatigue, and point number four, environmental factors. There are two, uh, uh, let's say, two aspects we are going to see uh, more in details now. So, fatigue. And bear in mind, when I say fatigue, I'm not only uh, referring to the, um, to the physical fatigue. We will see later in the next slide that we are also somehow speaking about uh, the mental fatigue of the workers. So a bad ergonomics, either it is of the layout of the working station of the skew driver, can have a very huge impact on the mental fatigue of our, of our workers. It can create some uh, illness um, uh, in the long run. Uh, if we break down uh, the fatigue factor, we can uh, we can see again more situation that you we are listing here in this slide. Fatigue uh, are res is a result of uh, several factors or sometimes bad habits that can be the force needed for tightening or triggering the tool. Can be the reaction on the hand when the, sort, the set torque is reached. So I guess if you are already familiar with this field of skew driver uh, and you have been experienced a real tightening with the power tools. You definitely re you realize then as soon as you reach the torque you set in the screwdriver, the screwdriver tends to turn, and your hand tends to follow the movements on the screwdriver. Okay. Uh, the screwdriver weight and balancing the wrong use of the screwdriver and some unsuitable layout of the working station. Now, points one to, uh, let's say, to four are, uh, they are directly referring to the, to the screwdriver itself. Point five and six, we will see they are uh, let's say, involving as well some external condition and situation, uh, especially in terms of, uh, again, conveyor lines or assembly lines that are whatever is around the workers. Um, one more point. Uh, these factors, uh, they are... They say they are the main causes of uh, uh, musculoskeletal uh, disorder, what we call MSD. And these are the disorders that are creating illness in the workers in the long run. Uh, the force needed for tightening or triggering the tool. Here we have a let's say some pictures with uh, clearly some film screwdriver that are uh, green screwdriver. Uh, let's say that the picture you have seen, you see here are uh, already um, what should be the, the correct grip of the screwdriver using, for instance, our, our tools. Uh, this one, for instance, is a pistol screwdriver with a high grip and is uh, specifically for self treating or self drilling screws. Why? Because for self 
treating and self-drilling skews, you need to uh, push uh, the skew driver uh, on the direction of the on the of the of the screw, of course. So gripping the tool from this side, you you can easily push the skew driver and obtain a better result. This one, this one, top right, is the same piece of skew driver, but you can see it has a different grip, and it is called a forward grip piece of skew driver. Is more balanced, and, and this skew driver is used and is needed whenever you are using metric skews. So you will not need to push toward the direction of the of the of the screws in this case. Bottom left, you have a up grip piston skew driver for uh, really particular cases. Uh, uh, Fian developed this skew driver back in the in the nineties, I guess, for some specific uh, models of ovens. So we are still talking about home appliances. Mm. So whenever you have a very low, uh, let's say low height uh, tightening point, this type of grip can help much to, uh, let's say, have a very ergonomic um, position. Then we have a straight skew driver. Uh, probably you, you cannot see clearly, but at the bottom of this straight skew driver, uh, between the grip and uh, and the bits and uh, uh, see yes the bits of the skew driver there is a a, a non slip collar that is helping the operator hand uh, uh, to avoid slipping out of the grip why because in some cases for instance again self reading a self drilling screws the operator in this case need to push down the hand toward the direction of the of the tightening. So this anti-slip collar helps to keep the hand within the grip. Uh, talking about the force needed to trigger the tool, um, FIAM, for those who, uh, let's say, already know us, in the uh, during the last year developed a new electric skew driver that is called Etensil. Uh, uh, Etensil uh, between several uh, features of the skew driver uh, is having one of the lowest, uh, let's say, one of the lowest force uh, needed in the market in order to push the lever. This uh, sounds, again, trivial, but suppose in a real, shake, in a, in a real um, case scenarios, uh, suppose we have an operator using these tools and is tightening one skew every three seconds, okay? If we do the math at the end of the day, so considering a shift of eight hours, this operator uh, will have done something like uh, 9,600 600 round down. So it's a huge number of, of operations. And uh, definitely this uh, repetitive operation of pushing the lever uh, uh, let's say if it's done for more than 9,000 times for, for one day and, and considering again five days a week or more and four weeks a month, if we don't have this kind of ergonomics, uh, um, let's say features of the skew driver, uh, for sure they will have a very bad impact on the 
let's say, uh, on the physical status of, of our workers. Uh, point number two and three, again, uh, the reaction on the end when the preset torque is reached that I've shown before, uh, this can be uh, easily, let's say, avoid using uh, some kind of auxiliary handles. Uh, indeed, we have a norm, a worldwide regulation that is the ISO, ISO uh, 111486 uh, related to portable tools that indicates that for torque higher than uh, four newton meters for straight tools and higher than 10 newton meters for pistol tools, we need to have, so this is a law, this is a regulation, we need to have some kind of, uh, uh, let's say, ergonomics aid, such as the, the torque arms. FIAM has a, let's say, a wide range of ergonomic arms, uh, either uh, telescopic, like in this picture, uh, uh, or um, Cartesian arms, as well as articulated Cartesian arms. And I invite you to check out our website, www.fiamgroup.com. Uh, point number three is, uh, let's say, can be somehow connected to point number two. So in order to, let's say, uh, avoid issues or, or reduce uh, the weight and improve the balancing of our skew driver. We can still use torque arms or balancers that will need to be connected to a, to a frame, to a structure in our, uh, let's say, working stations. Use of a skew driver. If you remember before, uh, I specify that there were some factors directly related to the to the skew driver itself, and some other that are need to uh, take into consideration the let's say the external environment uh, where we are using our skew driver. Uh, uh, so um, in this case. Suppose we have a vertical plane um, tightening its position. Uh, <clears throat> the direction, what we can see here, there are some cases. Left side, uh, let's say we see the operator that is using a straight skew driver in a, a non proper way. Why? Because we must. Uh, let's say the grip direction must allow, uh, let's say, the wrist to maintain always a, almost a straight position. So clearly here, for instance, the grip is completely uh, horizontal, but the wrist is not because we are tightening on a vertical wall and the tightening position is probably higher than our shoulders. Okay. Uh, another image, picture sh showing the same issues, but on the, on the other way. So the, the probably the tightening position is lower than our elbow. So it's going to create uh, a not really ergonomic situation. So in this case, it's clearly or we suggest to use our pistol skew driver where we can keep a perfect, let's say, uh, straight position of our wrist. Uh, either we are tightening in a higher position considering our shoulders 
or a middle position between our shoulders and our elbows, or as well a lower uh, position uh, comparing our our let's say the height of our of our elbow using a, a firm up grip screwdriver. Again, some um, pictures taken from, uh, uh, let's say, real case scenarios around the world. So uh, here you see that the operator, for instance, is tightening uh, probably with a pistol screwdriver on a horizontal position, which is already bad. And uh, again, is also tightening on a height which is higher than his shoulders. So this is a really critical condition and a very bad habit. So we, we might take some, uh, some action in order to improve the the ergonomics within, uh, <clears throat> in this case. Uh, these actions are not always related to the screwdriver itself or torque armors or whatever. In this case, for instance, uh, you just needed to, uh, to add, for instance, our ergonomic platforms in order to higher the position of, of our operators. Uh, so it will be able to use uh, a straight screwdriver in, uh, with a tightening position, which is in between my shoulders and uh, let's say my, my pelvis. One more point we shall consider in this picture is that operators, uh, let's say, should avoid having the arms uh, excessively lift, lifted, like um, in this case, sorry, or excessively uh, extended, like in this case, again, so, nor this one or this situation is good uh, for the operator. And again, in the long run, is going to create uh, probably, but not always, thanks God, uh, uh, a kind of illness for, for this operator. Let's talk now about um, the layout of our working station. Uh, well, uh, we all know that assemblies uh, procedures can be either on conveyors, so a moving line, or in fixed working station, like in this case. Uh, um, the first rule for fixed working station is that all the elements of our working station need to be uh, within an area of 42 more or less centimeters and uh, not closer than 70 centimeters to the operator. When I'm saying elements, I'm saying not only about the working part, um, I'm also referring to the, let's say, some parts, some bits, some accessories. So whatever the operator needs to pick up and grab in order to complete his daily job. Um, uh, one more point is that for this kind of uh, fixed, uh, let's say, uh, assembly station, uh, we highly recommend the use of jigs 
to hold the working parts. Uh, for example, uh, suppose you are having this screwdriver, you are assembling your part, and the working part is free to move. The minute you reach the torque, there will be a, uh, let's say, a reaction. Uh, if, if you remember, we have been spoken about this in the some slides ago. There will be a reaction, and this torque will be discharged to the working part because we actually we are firmly holding our screwdriver. So the torque will be discharged to the working part, and this situation might result in accident because the working part is moving, free to move, and can and can injure our our worker somehow. So uh, another factor we we have to consider is uh, probably is not really clear, but here we have a screwdriver with a very long bit or bit order. We suggest uh, actually it is suggested to avoid longer bits or bit order that are accessories of of screwdriver that force the, oper the operator to use more uh, pushing force indeed and getting back more vibrations. Uh, so clearly this is not a, a, a really uh, um, a good ergonomic layout. So again, in a summary, uh, what we need in order to have an uh, ergonomic layout of our working station. We need to have all the screws on the same side of the table. And remember, the least you handle the parts, the better it is. Okay, so uh, a layout of our working station with a, that is, that implies a uh, higher amount of manipulation of part is never a good choice. Always preferring top to bottom tightenings because it sounds stupid, but gravity helps. And for instance, in the automatic skew feeding systems, uh, um, for instance, top to bottom tightenings helps getting the screws easily down to the tightening head and driving it vertically on our working part. Again, using jigs or covers in order to hold the working part, uh, I, again, I insist on this point uh, because the jigs are an essential, uh, let's say, element for the best tightening and centering also, when we are not using manual screwdriver, what, rather we are using automated tightening systems. Um, where is necessary, necessary, it is important to have uh, jigs or components handling system with handles. Why? Because simply we will we were able to use automatic lifting devices so we are not our workers let's say they are not going to be uh, involved in any operation of moving very heavy uh, heavy parts here and there in the working station uh, uh, again last example on the layout of our working station, uh, specifically uh, emphasizing the handling of the parts. Uh, before here, this is, if I remember well, the assembly of a, of a saddle of a bicycle. So you can see here many screws down in the in the table of the working station. There is a the saddle. 
not hold it. So the operator needs every time to grab a new shadow, grab several screws because I guess there will be many screws here in the same working part. So it implies we are going to have a very repet repetitive and monotonous, monotonous operations. Uh, in the second picture, what FIAM uh, has done in this case, we added a, a jigs in order to keep uh, blocked our working part, the saddle, and we introduce the use of our handheld skew feeders, so called CA. So actually, we removed one process of the of the of the assemblies in this case the skews will be automatically blown down to the tightening head here therefore the operator only need to push the lever and run down the screws on the working part uh, clearly this is a step from a completely uh, manual, let's say, situation to a semi-automatic uh, assembly process. But again, there might be a, a next step using a full automated uh, machine. Uh, for instance, our MCA products, MCA feeder that are connected either on cobot or robot, but uh, you know, this also depends by the investment available budget from from the end user. Uh, environmental factors. This is a table, a chart we took from the uh, the World Health Organization uh, website, who that. Unfortunately, these days is very uh, famous and known for uh, other reason out of uh, our topic today. Uh, let's say that we have many factors that can contribute to musculoskeletal disorders. Here that we have some, uh, for instance, uh, what we have just seen before, frequently and repeated manipulation of all objects, such as the screws in the previous slide for the, for the assembly station. The possible results or consequence of this, uh, of this factor, let's say, is the uh, fatigue and overload of muscular structures of the operators. Uh, example, indeed, uh, the assembly works, long time, time typing and checkout work. Good practice example or solution, reduce as much as possible the repetition frequency of this operation. And this is just uh, what we have done with uh, in the previous line, adding askew feeders. Um, so, in a nutshell, in a summary, repetitive operations uh, they are devices uh, that allow workers focusing on more added value operation with no worries about minor factors. Uh, such as how many screws I need to tighten or the current sequence I need to follow up. This is, for instance, uh, in the picture, uh, our POM, TOM unit, that is basically our Pokayoke device, is a batch counting, is a sequence control devices, so the operator doesn't care about what is happening and can just, uh, let's say, uh, concentrate and focus on the uh, on the assembly operations. 
Then we have monotonous manipulations uh, that can be resolved, for instance, using FIAM skew feeders, uh, because uh, you shall know that most of the time in the assemblies field, when we refer to monotonous operation manipulation, we refer basically to the uh, picking up uh, and position of the screws in the, our working part. So again, our screw feeders, either they are semi-automatic or full automated, um, they say avoid that operator need to do this, this, uh, this process and uh, automatically organize and send the screws to the point of the skew drive. Last one, the fatigue, uh, either is mental one or physical one, uh, uh, can be uh, avoided using torque arms, or in this case, you can see uh, an assisted Cartesian arms from FIAM. So there's an additional device that is uh, somehow pushing down the skew driver automatically in order to help to support uh, the operator on the application of some self-treating or self-drilling screws. And Together with the torque arm, we should talk a little bit also about the tightening position monitoring devices that indeed are coming along with our torque arm and allow, uh, let's say they are a sequence control uh, devices. So again, as we have seen before in the point, point number two for the repetitive operations, the operator will just not care about what is happening in this process and will only take care about the, uh, let's say, the tightening operations. Following this way, so using this, uh, let's say, ergonomic ACE, um, we can preserve workers' physical and mental health enhancing higher value skills for the benefit of a um, higher productivity and quality of, of, the, of the end products because clearly uh, there will be less scraps and more, uh, let's say, uh, good end products with higher quality. Um, we are almost done. So this is uh, one of our, of the last slides of our presentation. So please do not give up, stay with us. Um, when I, I was asked to present this topic, I first wonder myself, uh, okay, but how many cases of illness due to uh, bad ergonomics we might have in the real world. So I just Google and this on, on the net and I found out uh, the UK, United Kingdom, some figures from the, the, the United Kingdom uh, Health Institute. Uh, well, let's say that United Kingdom is not really uh, well known for having a huge amount of industries uh, compared to other countries such as the United States, Asia, or South America. So, but even in a small um, countries in terms of industrial presence like the United Kingdom, we can see that uh, we do have musculoskeletal disorders 
uh, for a percentage of about 2%, considering 2,000 workers per 100,000 100, workers totally. But what is, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say, more eye-catching in this uh, graph is that back from 2001 up to 2020, so nowadays, we really didn't improve nothing on this percentage because it was 2% back in the year 2000 and it's probably something like 1.5% nowadays. So that means, at least to me, that there are still uh, a lot to do in order to reduce these values as much as possible uh, in order to, let's say, uh, improve uh, the, the life of the, work, uh, of the workers, uh, specifically in the industrial sector. Uh, just for your information, these, let's say, uh, disorders are referring mainly to heavy lifting, so lifting of very heavy loads, or uh, material manipulation that is, I can say, more uh, connected to our, to our cases. For, uh, for example, again, the manipulation of small screws, and as well, guiding and holding tool that is exactly our, our markets, so the power tools. I remember again that uh, about ergonomics, but not only, you can download from our website, actually you can request to download from our, our website, uh, several very interesting ebooks. So just again, Google uh, surf our website www.firmgroup.com and you will find a section with several topics, including this one I'm just indicating now. And that was, uh, let's say, the topic of uh, our webinar today. Uh, it's now five o'clock in Italy, so it's been an hour already. It's supposed to be half an hour, so uh, for sure, I'm sure you will have some questions. So uh, I kindly ask you, uh, because we already went uh, over time, I kindly ask you to write me an email on this email address, mgarziera.fiamgu.com, or you can also message me on my LinkedIn account, or as well, WhatsApp me on my mobile phone number. Or, if you wish, you can contact FIAM, as well as your uh, area manager that is following your area. Uh, so we are we are done for today. I hope you enjoy this webinar. Uh, I wish you to see you around again. I wish you a, a good day and stay safe. Uh, Thank you, everybody, again. Goodbye.